Ready? 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 Cool. Uh, Pami, I'm going to kind of explain and do very, very quickly. Three minutes. Um, this is how the current scenario works. In business, say there are three partners, right? A, B, and C. And when you start this business, you need a cap table. And put it very briefly, a cap table decides who owns what percentage of the company, right? So say A owns 30, B owns 50, and C owns 20. Very simple. Now, as this business gets bigger, right? Say, say this is a business that's making coffee stores, right? For just human. Now, this person A is very good at design. Person B is very good at making coffee, and person C is very good at making an e-commerce store. In the traditional world, as these guys scale, they would start adding more employees. And I'm drawing a line here to demarcate who the owners and who the employees are. So say they add an employee who goes out and puts uh, flyers on a tree near a college, right? Which is very close to the coffee place. Then maybe there's another employee who helps do delivery. Then maybe there's another employee who helps, you know, manage accounts or files in-house. Maybe so on and so forth. The company adds employees. In the early days, when a payment came in, say somebody paid them $100, or their earnings at the end of the day was $100, they would split it according to their proportions. Right? So it's very simple. Person A uh, gets 30, person B gets 50, and person C gets 20. It's very, very simple. But as you add more employees, you realize that if you want these employees to be on this cap table, say you want to have a person D, then because this cap table is full, you need to start diluting. And by diluting, I mean this 30 has to go down, say, 10%. The next person wants 10%. This person loses 10%. B loses 10%. C loses 10%. Right? And that kind of became difficult. So what lawyers proposed at that time, and this was somewhere in the 1970s, they proposed that they would separate the two. They would have a share structure, and then they would have a salary structure. And the salary structure worked very, very, um, I mean, it was very easy to understand. Right? Say the company makes a million dollars a year, right? And say out of that 200K went into procuring the coffee beans or the web hosting, whatever, some basic uh, expenses. The rest, the other 800K was available for salaries. So all of these guys took a little bit, right? Took a little bit of that salary. It need not be equal. Obviously, the owners get a little more because they you know, put in the risk in the early days. So say the salaries cost 700K. What is the difference? It's 100K. This is historically been called the profit. Of course, I'm skipping a few steps here, so this, this might, might, might not be the most technical explanation, but 100K was the profit, and what would happen then is either the 100K or a percentage of the 100K would be split amongst A, B, and C. So these three guys decided, let's use X amount of money to run the company, and then whatever is left, we'll split it amongst ourselves. Right? And that was a thought process that, that's been going on from 1960s to now. Right? And this is where Enkidu changes everything. Right? Enkidu came in because the world is changing. Right? And this is something you're very familiar with considering that you cover AI so much. This, this part of the equation, these employees who do repetitive actions, whether that be this person continues you know, making coffee, this person is replaced by a coffee machine, this person who is going out and putting out ads, you know, sticking paper to tree. Um, now this person is replaced by Facebook ads, which would take maybe five minutes of person B, right? And then runs automatically. Google, Facebook optimizes these ads themselves, right? And so on and so forth, until the right side of this image dwindles. You only have two or three people who are capable of adding something that a machine cannot, right? And these people will eventually, right? And this is our hypothesis, and if you are in, the, in that position, you'll understand this. They would start deserving equity in the parent company, right? So this cap table might get bigger, right? D and E, two two, let's make it two people, and maybe 0 0.01 and 0 0.0001, whatever, right? And all of these guys would dilute accordingly. I'm not, I'm not going to show you that, right? This is the world that is that we are um, on our way towards, right? And this is where Enkidu comes in. The magic with Enkidu is that. You have this payment gateway, 
in the real world when you have this not payment gateway the cap table in the real world when you have this cap table you've spent thousands of dollars on legal fees you have to choose a jurisdiction there's so many things for you to do you need an auditor i mean there's there's a lot just to pull this off so in enkidu all of this is free you just come to enkidu and you pick this you pick what your cap table is who you want to work with you can even find people right it's similar to an upwork you can find people who want to trade their time away for money uh, for for an investment in in the products that they're working on so ownership Right, so Enkidu allows people to have ownership in the things they work on, however small their contribution. And because there are no salaries to pay, even this ends up being significant at scale. So, uh, coming back to to Enkidu, what we do is when a payment comes in, say you run a coffee store, right, and the coffee store is on Enkidu. When a payment of say five dollars comes in, let me draw a man here. When five dollars comes in. This five dollars is split between the cap table, exactly what was happening at the last stage of a private company, right? And because Enkidu relies on the fact that there won't be too many people on this side, and even if there are, they will be, they will dwindle over time. Only the people who have ownership and who make decisions in the company are important and necessary, right? And those people all deserve a percentage of the revenues. Part of that revenue, of course, is locked away for treasury. treasury. And this treasury, uh, you can pay for coffee bills, you can pay for server costs, whatever it, whatever it takes, right? I mean, you need a little bit of liquid cash to walk around. But the rest is transferred between all these people trustlessly. This person does not need to trust this person. In the real world, why do you, why do you have a legal system? Because people don't trust each other, right? And everybody is trying to protect themselves. By putting down an MOU or a contract or whatever, right? Here there is no trust, right? Every time the payment hits this, this Enkidu payment gateway, payments is, is split. So as long as this payment gateway is live, and you know our future plans are to make this payment gateway pervasive, and this payment gateway is not a standalone payment gateway. It adds on top of a Stripe or something. So we're not disrupting that industry. You have a Stripe which is connected to an Enkidu. So the Stripe takes its payment that goes to Enkidu. Enkidu splits it according to cap table. So it's a, this is a payment gateway with a with a cap table inside, and that is essentially what we do. And the possibilities, obviously, I'm sure you're thinking about it. Instant payments for all of your employees, for anybody who works. The minute you purchase something from Starbucks, you know that four or five of their employees are being paid automatically. Obviously, a Starbucks is not going to use this at this point until everything's automated. But that is the goal, right? And we're very very early for our times. And what I'm telling you is revolutionary in the in the sense that you might not have heard anything like this before. And we have a working prototype as well. I hope I did a decent job of explaining this to you. Thanks.